Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So I am Federica Grossi, and the title of my presentation is Dynamic Modeling and Control of Hybrid Automotive Systems. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, as uh, this is a, um, a work uh, uh, which is focused on uh, modeling of physical systems, first of all, I will speak about energy-based graphical modeling techniques that are the techniques uh, thanks to which uh, we are able to uh, make suitable models. Then uh, the two big parts of the presentation are devoted to the vehicle dynamics and the hybrid propulsion system. For the vehicle dynamics, I will present uh, the model of the three-dimensional dynamics of the vehicle in the environment, and in particular, the interaction of the vehicle with uh, the environment thanks to uh, tires. In the second part, uh, it is to say the hybrid propulsion system, I will talk about the main subsystems constituting the hybrid propulsion system that are multi-phase electrical motors, the internal combustion engine, that are the two uh, sources of energy, then the planetary gear that is used to split power in the system, and finally I will show the whole model of an hybrid electric vehicle. So, we consider uh, modeling techniques. Um, in particular, we consider graphical modeling techniques. It is to say something techniques which provide uh, a graphical representation. They are energy-based technique uh, because they use as, uh, as uh, the main concept uh, for modeling the um, concept of energy flowing within the dynamical system. We have uh, many techniques uh, in the literature. Here um, I show you the energetic macroscopic representation and the well-known bone graph technique. The energetic macroscopic representation is um, an energy-based technique uh, which uses uh, uh, some pictograms in order to represent different parts uh, of the system. For example, you can see over there the mechanical source of energy or uh, element uh, uh, which can accumulate energy and so on. This technique uh, gives uh, only a macroscopic view of the energy flow of, of the system. Uh, it doesn't show a mathematical model, but it provides a methodology in order to obtain and to design the control of the system. It is an inversion-based methodology, thanks to which uh, you can um, provide uh, a determination of control schemes of complex energetic system. And uh, it is an inversion-based methodology because it is based on the inversion of uh, the main uh, elements uh, in the representation. The bone graph technique uh, is a, a very um, famous technique which was developed in 1959 and uh, it uses uh, this uh, symbol which um, uh, has uh, a lot of parts. It is composed by a bond, that is the line uh, you can see, and uh, they use uh, a definition of power variables that are split into effort and flows variable. Then there's an arrow showing the positive direction of power, and there is a stroke uh, standing for uh, causality. But in uh, our work, I exploited the power-oriented graph technique. Uh, this is uh, also uh, an energy-based technique and with a graphical approach. It is, um, the, the POG scheme is a block diagram, but uh, uh, it has a particular modular structure that is based on two main blocks, that are the elaboration block and the connection block. The elaboration block can store and dissipate or generate energy, while the connection block uh, is responsible only for transformation of energy. So we have only two main blocks. Uh, we have some uh, dashed lines uh, indicating power sections in the system, and we have that uh, the product of the two variables involved in the dashed line had the physical meaning of the power flowing through that particular section. 
In the POG frame, we define uh, power variables as across and through variables. And is, this definition is slightly different uh, from definition of effort and flow or kinetic and potential variables that is made in uh, the techniques presented so far. Uh, Power-oriented graphs uh, have uh, a particular feature that uh, make uh, this technique particularly suitable for our aims. And moreover, we can state that there's a direct correspondence between POG schemes and state space equations. So uh, starting from a POG scheme uh, and following some graphical rules, uh, you are able to directly write the state space equations of the system. Moreover, as uh, it um, uses only a few blocks, it can be directly implemented uh, into um, common purposes simulators such as Simulink, as we need only, we need only uh, integrators, uh, gains, uh, and um, some elements. Uh, here in this table there's a lot of concepts and it is about uh, a comparison of the three techniques that I make in my work. And uh, uh, I can say that uh, we choose the POG technique uh, mainly for these three aspects. That is the fact that we have uh, only two basic elements. We can obtain the mathematical model uh, from the graphical scheme and uh, uh, they allow um, very uh, quick transformation translation into Simulink for simulation. Uh, other techniques are, um, have different objectives uh, and so uh, we use uh, in the whole world the power-oriented graph. Let's uh, move on the first uh, topic regarding the vehicle. Um, in classical uh, mechanics, we can write the differential equations of the motion of a car in the environment. But in this work, we prefer to use C-Mechanics toolbox, that is a MATLAB toolbox, that allows to compose uh, dynamical systems by means of bodies, rigid bodies, and joints. Uh, yes, and joints connecting them in order to uh, put constraints between the uh, motion, the relative motion among bodies. Bodies. So here you can see the C mechanics model of the car. We have the car body that is uh, the mm, biggest block, uh, then we have suspensions, uh, we have the wheels, and finally connected to the wheels, we have the tire ground interaction models. These blocks are not provided by C mechanics, but uh, they, are, uh, they have been uh, realized um, uh, in this work. In fact, uh, um, for uh, regarding the vehicle, uh, in we have to remember that the main mechanism to convert the motor torque into a longitudinal force uh, to uh, make the vehicle move, the main mechanism is the interaction uh, uh, between the tires and the ground. Uh, so uh, I will present the tire ground interaction model. In the literature, many models uh, for uh, these issues have been proposed. For example, here uh, we can see the Pacheca magic formulas, they are uh, called in this way, that are static curves which are based on uh, empirical data fitting and they relate uh, the slip ratio with the friction coefficient. The main drawback of uh, this formula is the fact that they are static and uh, they mix together two different phenomena there are, that are the slip and the skid. The slip uh, is um, the, um, the ratio uh, between, we can say, the longitudinal velocity of the vehicle and the rotational speed of the wheel, while the skid uh, is uh, a phenomenon occurring when the wheel has a loss of adherence of the, on the ground. There's another model uh, that is the Lugri friction model. Uh, um, you can see the dynamic equation of this model. Uh, this is a dynamic model, so it is important, and it is based on the deformation of the so-called bristles. It is to say the tire is model as composed by bristles. The main drawback we found in uh, this model is that uh, it can also be not dissipative. So uh, we thought that uh, there's the need of a new dynamic model of the tire ground friction, which is closer to the real physical behavior of uh, this uh, tire road friction. 
So we proposed an energetic model of the tar ground interaction. In particular, we introduced an elastic element describing uh, the interaction of the tire uh, with the ground. Here you can see the POG scheme of this system, where there are a lot of blocks uh, standing for uh, coordinate transformations, the three-dimensional dynamics of the wheel, other transformation in order to uh, change the reference frame. Then uh, you can see in green uh, the elastic element, and finally here uh, we find the skid and the slip. We have the skid when uh, uh, the force vector at the contact point exceeds a skidding ellipsoid, and this results in a loss of adherence of, uh, of the wheel. And uh, we have slip only when uh, both the contact force in the longitudinal direction and the angular velocity of the wheel in the other direction are different from zero. Uh, we implemented this model in MATLAB, and uh, here you can see some uh, picture of uh, simulations. On the left, we see the skidding ellipsoid, and uh, um, in blue, there's the, the force uh, vector, the normalized force vector. So we can see this mechanism of the force vector exceeding the, sl the skidding ellipsoid, and then um, enters back to the ellipsoid. In the right part, uh, we plot uh, the friction coefficient as a function of the slip ratio. This comes from our simulation, but uh, we can see that the shape is quite similar to Pacheca's curve, uh, remembering that this is a static curve. Um, the whole system has been implemented uh, also in a virtual reality scenario, so we are able to give animation of the system over time. For example, here we see a steering maneuver. And in order to have a, a better view of the dynamic behavior of the system. Or we can see also another maneuver that is uh, uh, the braking of the car. We can see also um, uh, difference in forces uh, at the ground interaction and so on. Let's move on uh, now on the second part, that is the hybrid propulsion of uh, uh, an hybrid uh, vehicle. In the lit literature, there are many different architectures uh, for hybrid propulsion. For example, the main uh, uh, categories are the series, parallel, and power split. In the series one, we see that there's no direct path connecting the internal combustion engine and the driving axle, but only uh, the path from the electrical motor. In the parallel configuration, we have uh, uh, that uh, you, you can choose uh, um, among uh, the electric, or, uh, electric motor path or the internal combustion engine path to driving axles. While in the power split architecture, it is possible to use uh, uh, the two motors uh, uh, even at the same uh, time. We choose uh, this second uh, architecture. So uh, let's have a look of the model of the main subsystems constituting it. First of all, uh, I speak about uh, the electrical motors modeling. We considered multi-phase synchronous motors, because in automotive field they are uh, mainly used for their better reliability uh, with respect to th uh, common three-phase motors. And uh, in this work we provide uh, the model of such motors for um, another generic number of phases and for a generic shape of the rotor flux. It is to say that it is suitable for every periodic shape of the rotor flux. Using a Lagrangian approach, we wrote uh, the differential equations and moreover, using some orthonormal transformation, it is possible to change the reference frame and to write very compact uh, equations of the system that are shown here. We analyzed the, the torque vector, that is uh, the uh, vector um, which gives uh, the torque, the motor torque, when it is multiplied by currents. 
And uh, analyzing this uh, vector in depth, we were able to provide the optimal shape of the rotor flux. It is to say, the best rotor flux um, in order to minimize dissipations. In fact, with this kind of rotor flux, uh, we have the same torque but minimizing uh, the needed currents. This is the POG scheme of the motor in the transformed reference frame. So we can see the transformation, the energy accumulation. This uh, stands for uh, both dissip dissipations and uh, redistribution. This is the energy conversion. And here you can see the torque vector that allows to pass from the electrical domain to the mechanical domain. And then in the mechanical part, we see the energy accumulation and some dissipations. Also, this, mm, this scheme has been implemented in uh, Simulink, and we provided some libraries, uh, uh, also with a user interface. In this way, we have a modular approach to the work, so um, we, we will see uh, in the next slide, you are able to compose the, complex, the more complex system using these basic blocks. Um, there are many kind of control you can uh, give for uh, electrical motors. Uh, here, for example, I consider a vectorial torque control. In the literature, it is usually uh, do did with voltage approach. Here, we used a current approach, and thanks to some geometrical analysis, we were able to translate the saturation on input voltages into some constraints or on currents. So this is a current approach, and I, I don't go into details, but uh, giving some um, very effective control. Uh, here you can find some simulation results. Uh, we see over there the motor velocity and motor torque in uh, different changes uh, uh, during time of the simulation. And uh, on the right we see um, the motor torque uh, uh, versus uh, motor velocity and uh, um, the trajectory is, um, yes, is uh, the, the red trajectory uh, pointed out by the green point. Okay. Uh, the second source of energy in this kind of architecture is the internal combustion engine. In this case, uh, I provide a simplified model, in particular that is based on the electrical analogy among mechanical and uh, electrical domain. In particular, we choose to simplify the approach, eliminating the space dynamics while preserving only time dynamics. So you can see on the left the equivalent electric circuit and on the right the corresponding POG scheme. In this way, we were able to write the whole system differential equations in state space form. And moreover, simulations are very fast with respect to uh, common um, models used uh, for this kind of, of motors. Here you can see uh, some comparison uh, between the um, simulation and measured, um, um, measured data. On the left we have the velocity of the motor shaft, on the right the motor torque. So we can see that if, uh, even uh, if um, they are, uh, uh, the model is uh, mm, not uh, very precise, it allows to have a very fast simulation. The element uh, thanks to which we are able to split power in such an architecture is uh, the planetary gear. So here we propose uh, uh, a model of the planetary gear. In the literature, they usually use some static models uh, um, pointing out only the uh, ratio the gear of the gear. In this case, we propose uh, a dynamic model. This. Uh, um, is the system where we find a sun in the middle, some uh, planets, uh, a ring uh, over all, and a carrier connecting the centers of the planets. This is the POG scheme of, uh, of, this, uh, of this system. Uh, we can say it is uh, not too, too simple, but uh, we can see that uh, there's uh, a direct correspondence between uh, the power sections of the scheme and uh, the physical elements. So, for example, here you can see the sun, the elastic element, the planets and carrier, and other elastic elements, and finally the ring. 
the state space equations uh, that you can um, uh, write uh, starting from the POG scheme are represented here. This is a very complex uh, extended model. So we provided some reduced models. Uh, thanks to the POG technique, we are able to do this. Uh, for example, applying, applying a rectangular and congruent transformation, we are able to give a reduced inertial model where we eliminate uh, the elasticities uh, in the model and we obtain um, a two-dimensional model. Then applying uh, another transformation, we can eliminate uh, the inertias of the sun, carrier, and ring, and uh, we obtain a reduced elastic model, uh, which has dimension three. Finally, if we eliminate all the um, dynamic elements, we can obtain a static model that is exactly the one that you can usually find in, li in the literature. Also for this system, uh, a Simulink library is provided with, with a user interface and this can be used in simulations. So the power split propulsion structure that we are considering is represented over there. We model the electrical motor, the internal combustion engine and the planetary gear. Uh, that are connected in this way. It is to say the electrical motor is connected to the sun, the internal combustion engine to the carrier, and the ring is connecting to the driving axle of the vehicle. For uh, these simulations, a simplified model of the vehicle is used. It is to say not the three-dimensional model I presented so far, but a simplified model. It is a two-dimensional model without suspension, but with the tire ground interaction model. So we also take into account this aspect. Uh, the POG model of the whole hybrid automotive system is shown here. Um, remember that uh, between the power section, you can put all the POG schemes presented so far. It is to say we use the modular approach, thanks to which we are able to compose the whole model. Then there's the direct translation into a simulink scheme that you can see here. And uh, for example, for the electrical motor and the planetary gear, you see the masked blocks uh, coming from the library we made. In this case, we use the reduced elastic model of the planetary gear. And uh, uh, on the right, there's the simplified model of the vehicle. Here, some simulation results are presented in this case, we considered a start and stop simulation where the internal combustion engine is switched off. It is to say the rotational speed of the carrier is zero and we achieve the desired velocity only controlling uh, the electrical motor. We can see the velocity of the vehicle, the velocities of the planetary gear and uh, in last uh, figure, the power, flow, power flows within the system. On the, in the first part, uh, it acts uh, as a motor because power is positive. Then uh, when it's negative, we can see the generator mode. So concluding, uh, this work uh, was mainly focused on modeling, in particular of subsystems constituting an hybrid automotive system. The main uh, innovative elements uh, uh, in this work are the use of power-oriented graphs because uh, of uh, their particular features. They are uh, particularly suitable uh, in uh, modeling of such systems. We provided an energetic model of the tire ground interaction. We model some multi-phase motors in the most general case. And uh, we model the planetary gear uh, providing a dynamic model and also reduced model. And uh, um, Above all, uh, we have a modular approach for simulation. This is very important because now uh, we have some libraries that we can compose in order to, um, pr uh, to build up uh, different kinds of systems. Future work inv involves uh, uh, some experimental tests uh, and the design of uh, uh, vehicle control in order to improve safety and comfort, uh, the control of the electrical motors involving also fault tolerant, full tolerant mode, and uh, uh, finally some control strategies for the hybrid propulsion. 
Here there's a list of uh, my publication during these years. So that's all. Thank you for your attention.